we are taking a tour of Fire Station 50, which recently won an ORCID award in the San Diego Architectural Foundation's annual Orchids and Onions event. Beep's own Margit Whitlock recently visited and spoke with several of the firefighters of Team C. Let's hear what they had to say. Okay, I'm here with uh, Fire Station 50, and I have four very brave guys. So as a firefighter, what is it like living in a firehouse? It's a pretty unique job for us because we are literally living here one third of our lives uh, while working during the month. Uh, sometimes we can be here multiple days at a time. Uh, we're all pretty much like a family unit together. We have different roles when it comes to working on the fire engine right here even in the station. We perform different roles and we all eat together and we just live together. And so it's uh, it's pretty unique where most of the jobs you leave and go home when the work is done. We're staying all the way through the night, sometimes multiple days in a row. So it's quite unique. I'd love to hear your ideas about the space, geometry, and function. All right, so the design of Station 50 is pretty innovative. We have uh, these at bay doors on both sides, which allows the apparatus to pull through so you don't have to back in, which is just inherently safer and causes less accidents. We have this final vent system, this exhaust system, that also extracts all the diesel exhaust out of here, which keeps us safer. Um, as far as the function goes, there's three levels uh, to this station, and the app floor is being one of them, and then sectioned off into the gym, office, and uh, kitchen and dorms, which just kind of makes sense for function as far as the things that you might be doing all together. Thank you. The architecture is beautiful. Um, from the exterior, the, the station looks like high-tech, state-of-the-art building. Um, Passer buyers always stop by and uh, compliment the building itself, say how modern it looks, how beautiful, and um, from a distance, it's not necessarily an eyesore, so people are happy to be um, supported by a fire station that looks like this. It, it shows that um, we're not here, um, we're not just a run down the fire department, you know, we do have the funds to support our fire station and support our uh, the community. So how does the design of this building support your work and your lifestyle? The uh, apparatus bay is separate from our living quarters, kitchen, and gym area. That's really good for our cancer awareness prevention program. You can see this uh, app bay is, as well as built for the future. So as the population grows, buildings come out, and the need for more services from the fire department are willing to uh, be staffed up here. So here we are in the kitchen, which I hear is the heart of the house. So they're going to tell us a little bit about why this kitchen is so special. All right, so the reason why I think this kitchen is special is because we have these huge windows right here, and you get a great view of our neighborhood right here, which is unlike any other kitchen in the apartment. Most kitchens are kind of in the dark a little bit, and you know, you definitely don't have a view, not as much lighting, and the fact that you use it take this in while you're eating or making food or something that makes this a little special. Now this is one of my favorite places as well. Well, I think it's most important because no matter where you are in the station, what time of the day it is, everyone comes here in the morning and they get to talk about their last shift or their off days and everyone gets to reconnect and uh, start the day off right. And I think that's very important to making sure everyone's on the same page for the day and everyone's uh, ready to go. All right, Sean, tell us why this room is so important. Uh, well, every once in a while we get some time to relax. So this is called the bullpen or the TV room, day room. Uh, as you can see, we have our shift, we have four people on duty and plus a chief would make it five. That's why you have five in the front row. But if like we said, we'll staff up for the future in wildland events. That's why we have extra row recliners. Uh, we have an entertainment center, and also we're trying to incorporate the local high school with their jerseys here and uh, do a little station pride with that. That's awesome. Need a popcorn machine? Uh, yeah, we'll take one. <laughs> the way I do look at things is I, I think of the stations were built about 50 years ago, and, and some of the, uh, I'd say, biggest differences. And, where, the, where we've got to take advantage here with this station is just how we put our living quarters above the apparatus bay. And the other older stations are single story uh, 
fire station that will usually have your uh, kitchen slash open or family area that we looked at earlier. But then you have your apparatus bay, and then on the other side, you have your living dorms. A lot of times those are open dorms too, where you are just separated by a curtain. But the biggest thing is every time that fire engine, especially the older fire engines, would come in or out of the ap apparatus bay, it would be blowing diesel exhaust that, that could be getting either, excuse me, either into your living quarters or into the kitchen. So having a station that's built this way is only benefiting us in our health. So my favorite part of this fire station is the gym. This helps us both mentally and physically because this is a beautiful gym with a lot of equipment. It's unique to any other fire station that I've worked at where you have a separate room dedicated with all this equipment just for, the, just for exercise. Being able to come down here at any time of the day or night helps us both mentally and physically. And therefore I think every gym should be like this at a fire station. So Fire Station 50, I really want to thank you all for your time and your uh, generosity of showing me around and giving you some fun interviews. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. That was great hearing from the firefighters from Station 50. And thanks, Margit, for all the great questions. Well, let's get started with our sketch. I love this view of the fire station, partly because it's beautiful composition of squares and rectangles with a couple of angles thrown in for variety and, and then those bright red squares for, for drama. The composition is one reason I get inspired to sketch something. In addition to sketching a pleasing view, I will often sketch something I see to help me save the moment or so I can capture a thought I might be having so I can come back to it later. Let me do an overlay to break down our sketch, our fire station sketch, into simple shapes. Doing this may help me understand what it is about the drawing, what it is about what I'm looking at that inspires me. I start off seeing a floating square. And then a little more than halfway down from that square is a line and a rectangle. There's a line up here and another little rectangle right there. We're pretty much done with our sketch. This little garden wall, the sidewalk. We're going to drop in those red doors. And that's about it. When you're sketching, you could keep your sketches this fast and simple. Especially if you're in a hurry. You'll get the idea. I'm going to start today just blocking out in pencil. Some people find it easier that way. Usually when I'm sketching on location, I'll go right, I'll just start with the pen and work from there. But for this tutorial, we'll block out in pencil. It'll be, it'll be easier for us and less intimidating. I want to start with that square because it's easy to draw and a lot of things relate to that square. I'm going to start over here on the right side of the drawing. I, I look at the composition, which is the composition is composed for us already. The camera has done that. And that floating square is about in the middle of our drawing, up and down, but over here on the right hand side. So I draw your square. Almost doesn't matter the size of it. And what I mean by that is. It's the first thing, so it di dictates the size of everything else. All right, it's holding my pencil loose. You saw that I did the square kind of loose. We'll come down about halfway, a little more than halfway on the square and draw a horizontal line. Find that same distance from here to here and come down here. That's the bottom of the portion of the fire station that where it hits the ground make a little line. Let's start our sketch in pencil. When I'm sketching on location, I usually use a pen because I don't have enough time to do in pencil first and then go to ink, but we have time today and it's less intimidating. I want to start with that square because it's easy to draw and a lot of things relate. The position of a lot of the other things <clears throat> <clears throat> and the position of everything else seems to relate to that square. 
I'm going to start over here on the right side of the drawing. I, I look at the composition, which is the composition is composed for us already. The camera has done that. And that floating square is about in the middle of our drawing, up and down, but over here on the right hand side. So I draw your square. Almost doesn't matter the size of it. And what I mean by that is it's the first thing, so it di dictates the size of everything else. All right, and holding my pencil loose, you saw that I did the square kind of loose. We'll come down about halfway, a little more than halfway on the square, and draw a horizontal line. Find that same distance from here to here and come down here. That's the bottom of the portion of the fire station that where it hits the ground. Make a little line. Now, how far over do we go? Hmm. If this is our measuring point, looks like one width of these squares is about the same as two of these. So if we've got If you take your pencil and you do a little measuring, the point of your pencil marks one point, one end, one edge of it, and your fingers marking the other edge of it. So come over here and make a dot, make a dot. Okay, so doing it that way, my first line is a little wide. Well, let's test it. Let's let's say that it's like this, and let's let's do something else to help us find if we're accurate here. Um, there's a little line in the edge here I'd like us to draw first. All right, and then let's see if we can divide this in sort of three equal, three equal bays. Let's draw two little lines and another two little lines right there to create these columns. And then a little bit up from the bottom here, make a horizontal line. How does that look? So what we've done, it's almost like process of elimination. We draw in some lines that we are that are easy to scale. And that gives us the width of this garage door. Then what we want to do is, is we'll know that these other two are the same width. Use your pencil. Looks like we might that maybe just give it a little more at the end here. There, there's your three garage doors. And they're about right. All right, how about if what should we do next? Let's do this big overhang up here. It's up near the top of our ba our first square. So, so come down a little bit from the top, draw a horizontal line. How far do we go off to the left? Well, let's compare it to what we've already done. We know where this is, this little downspout's right here. It's a little bit to the left of the downspout. So find your downspout, go a little bit to the left. That's the end. If you want to clean up, so you don't confuse yourself, take that line away. Now here's one of our funny diagonals. That's the edge of that roof receding back. Let's let's find it by by using our pencil to tell us what that angle is. Hmm. Looks like it like that. Okay. 
how about where this line is, which is the back edge of that overhang where it hits the wall. While we're looking from here to here, the top of this wall to the top of that roof, I'd say the top of the glass wall is about two thirds of the way up. Let's try it and draw a horizontal line. The edge of that is not quite all the way over to the edge of that door. Is it starting to take shape? Can you see it? Let's find the other edge of that window wall on the right hand side. We do see a little bit of this box. We see the box in 3D a bit. So how about let's find the top of that box. It's a pretty sharp angle. Slip your pencil like that. Another way of finding it is it actually lines up with the edge of this garage door. So that box tends to come together where we drew our angle and the edge of the garage door. And if you were really careful looking, you'll see that there's some space up there. And our drawing kind of reflects that. So we're, we're finding how these two shapes are coming together. Is it working for you? Please. Let's put this other little rectangle in. It doesn't go all the way to the top. And how far does it go? It goes about all the way out to the middle of this garage door. So there it is. So you got your floating square, your three doors, the glass, the roof overhang, and, and this other little solid. Let's divide up the glass. There's a line, horizontal line, across there. And then this is divided into about four equal shapes. Not exactly, but close enough. So draw halfway between these two, and then that one halfway, and this one halfway. I find that cutting something in half is easier than, say, starting at the right and making four equals. We're nearly there. There's four cantilevered beams coming out of this. This first one comes straight out at us. The second one's got it. This first one's coming straight out at us. The second one's got a little bit more of an angle. And if we want to use our pencil to test this one is angled a little bit more. And you see how the beams are coming, um, they're meeting right at the top of these verticals. And then the last one is angled a little more. All right, now what are we missing? You know, there's light little rail. This is a safety railing up here. How high up does it go? A little less than half up the height of this. That's a good way to find it. Draw a light line across. And then you can divide these up how you want. You can be accurate or you can just make a series of the vertical supports. All right, how about the, uh, two things left? Just a couple things left. There is a door over here and a roof. Hmm. We could find it. We, we see that this looks like it's about halfway. There's these two equal panels here, and then that's a little thinner. That matches these two. Maybe we find our vertical right in the center. And then it's not half, it's a little 
It's a little skinnier than half, so let's make some lines like that. All right. I'd say that looks about like that panel over there where there's the dark panel. And then the glass, and there's this little roof overhang. We'll use our, our angle, pencil angle. Ooh, it's a pretty sharp, uh, pretty, pretty sharp angle there. We have a door. We'll have to figure out how to make it look like a door. It's a glass door. How can you tell it's a glass door with all these other solid things? But we'll figure out a way. So there we have it. All right, how about this little part down here? It looks like uh, let's finish this wall. The bottom of this box comes out just a little. And the bottom of this section of the building doesn't go all the way across. We've got this curvy wall. We're going to do that last. It's sort of like a kale. We have this little door. It's like another little square down here. So if you can make a little square down here, those are your doors. And just to the right of your doors, is this wall. Just feel free to make it go off like that. We're just putting in, loosely putting in our sketch for now because when we get our pen, we'll do a few more. So there's a little sloping line. We're gonna give it more definition when we get the pen out. So there's a sloping line. That's that sloping. They've got a planting area that slopes. And it comes to the corner of the building here, and then it's at an angle. There's a diagonal from the corner of the building, goes out about like that. The top of the, it looks like a little wall up there. Maybe that's the sidewalk, maybe it's just a little low wall so people don't fall off. And then, so that we can establish this kind of in its little neighborhood. Let's do some of those trees beyond. On this side of the building, there's trees beyond, just some squiggly lines. We're getting to the edge of our drawing, so you could block it out here. When I when I block out the edge of the drawing like this, it, it, it's like an easy way of saying, I don't have to keep sketching over here. I can stop and give myself permission not to have to worry about all the other details that are there. Um, a couple last little things, maybe the little railing over here. It's a little fence. Okay, I think that's enough for now and um, we can Okay, flagpole, no flag today, but let's draw in the flagpole. Mine's a little dark. It looks like it's right in between this little skinny area and it goes way up and has a little ball on top. Wouldn't it be fun that we could visualize a flag? Okay, maybe that's a little tricky. I'm probably going to leave the flag off of mine. But you can draw a flag in yours. Now let's go and finish with... One more thing we can do with pencil. There's these horizontal lines. This is some glass, like view panels, in those big roll-up garage doors so that a fire person, when they're walking by, might be able to see if there's a fire truck in there. 
so that you get a feeling for how big a person might be in this draw in this sketch because there's no people how do we know that this is not a tiny building versus a really big building this door tells us how big helps us identify how big this is a person a six foot tall, most you know an average adult is going to be somewhere five ten six feet tall most doors in your house are six feet eight inches tall. Most doors on commercial buildings are seven feet, though sometimes they're eight feet. So let's say this is a seven foot door and a person who's six feet tall might be that big. That little person's hard to see. So you can imagine that a six foot tall person, if they were walking by these doors, they'd be able to see in those glass view panels but it also tells us that these are really tall roll-up fire doors, these garage doors for the fire trucks, and they may be 12, 13, 14, maybe even 15 feet tall. But I think we're ready to go to the next phase now. Let's start finishing our drawing by, by inking the lines in. I like to use um, a thin pen. I'm, that's what I'm going to use for the demonstration today. If I was using a thicker pen, it would go a lot faster. This is just my pen of preference. Let's retrace our steps. That's usually where I start. So if we started with this, this square up here, I'll, I'll start with it now in pen. And just, we can do our, our square. Maybe when we get over to here, we don't need to outline it. So it won't be exactly as we did the pencil lines. Doesn't hurt to uh, draw in some of these. Now would be a good time to draw in some of these shapes. Look, at there's a, a thicker dark line right there up at the top. So I'll just do a second line with the pen. How about this, this floating, cantilevering, entry cover. There, looks like what we've got. The corner, we can see the glass. And we'll come back in and give some definition of what's going on over there in a little bit. Next, we'll do the rectangle where the, the bays of garage doors are. You can fill them in any way you like. If you'll notice, you'll see a little bit of the frame uh, around the doors. This one shows that it's, it's set back a little bit. It's a little thicker on the left medium on the in the middle and you hardly see it on the right but you can draw a little a little line around the um, around the doors themselves just to show that there's a little it's different than the concrete but this part down here just where the door is and there, a fun little garden wall, a little snaky wall. This is the back side of the fire station, actually. It's a nice looking fire station that you can see from the intersection, and there's this beautiful big uh, artwork on the wall you should you may want to when you go out there you may want to go ahead and um, sketch from one of the other sides I just happen to like this view let's finish off this this shape and then look how you can tell really tell that it's the floating cube because you can see the side of it I guess while I'm here I'll go ahead and dry uh, draw in the sketch in the 
flagpole. There's a little shape, a little thickness to the edge of that cantilevered roof overhang. See if you can get that in. windows. If there's any extra lines you wanted to, to put in there, you can. When you're doing these um, cantilevered beams, you'll notice that there's a little, little rectangle right at the end of them. You can draw that, etch that in. And then how much of the glass do you want to show? Should we those upper windows divided in two? And then in the midsection, those are divided in two. But then in these other bays, it looks like there's another horizontal bar and then a door in between each. If you want that much detail, go ahead and add them in. If not, leave it out. You get to decide how much you tell. And there's a little door here we didn't we didn't add in our pencil sketch, but we can add now. Try to do a really light line for this railing because it's so thin. The faster you draw in, in with a pen, the um, the lighter the line will be. When you draw with a pen and you slowly drag it out, it gives the ink too much time. To collect on the paper. And so um, to make a line seem less important, draw it quickly. Give it a try. You'll notice in the picture that there are lights on and, and um, it creates some sort of a pattern on the doors. We're going to ignore those. This is this is just for the shapes. A few more things to add if you like those View windows, and you can go ahead and darken them in. Also, lightly, if you want, these are control joints in the concrete. There's also some control joints in, in this floating square and the stucco, and we can draw those in. Again, you want to do them quickly so that they're light. There's some here too. Notice that they've got a different size in the middle than they do up top. These are some details that if you're not sure you're going to be able to get light enough, you could leave off. And how about the a hint at the trees beyond? A little fence here and here. So that's it for our lines and shapes and even some of the detail we've been able to get in. The next thing in a sketch, in developing a sketch, is to add detail and tonal value. So we've added some of the details, as I said, the tonal value now, that would be making dark areas dark, leaving light areas untouched. And in this sketch, I think the dark areas would be maybe some of the planters to give to, to, to um, so, some of the planting areas to give the building itself some punch, but also for the glass. 
I'm going to propose that we, we tone in all of our glass areas darker. And let's do it with diagonal lines so that it looks like it's reflected a bit. But go ahead and all the glass areas, give it a little punch. And I would make those diagonal lines. They don't have to be evenly spaced. You can cluster them like this. Do make them all in the same direction. Whichever direction you want to go, like the way I'm doing it, you can, but or the other direction, but try to be uniform. in the direction that is. Now one thing you might notice is it's a little darker up top because it's reflecting that overhang and so you could go back in and add more there. So it's nearly black at that point. Maybe try not to do what I've done. I think I've I've put too much black in here. It's hard to see those white bands, that big horizontal white band and the vertical post. So maybe you can do a better job with yours than I've done with mine here in this demonstration. We had already done these. Do the door. A little reflection from this building if you wanted to darken in over here show that it's got more than just the sky reflecting on it. The next thing, all right, what do we do for this? This is very dark, but it's not glass. So I'm gonna propose, let's give it a little texture. Let's make some horizontal lines. But let's, even though this is well lit, let's tone it so that it'll look like all of the other glass. It looks like it's got a bar in here. And then this glass down here. Looks like the back entrance. I should mention if you go out to the fire station, there's a there's a safe place uh, to 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 see this angle of the building, and it's um, there's a driveway, a one way driveway, just for the fire trucks to leave. And you could sit there at the edge of the curb, or you can stand out there and sketch. Now, just for fun, I don't know if you can see these, but a lot of times there are tiny little dots in the concrete wall. And it has to do with the way that they cast concrete walls. But a lot of times we'll go ahead and add those dots in our sketches because it helps to say that's a, that's a cast in place concrete wall and we know it is because it's got those dots in it. couple of things that we've left out. The number 50, these little tiny squares for the lights, and then if you'd like to do the downspouts. So you could just block out 5 and O. Oh. A little rectangle there at the top, and then these skinny lines for the downspouts. This larger thing at the top is called a conductor head. And then little rectangles right above the center of the doors, and those are the lights. Any other little lights you want to add, any other little details you want to add, now's a good time to do it. Okay, and then I mentioned I was going to do some, some shading back here where the plants are to try to give the building some punch.
And we're almost done. A couple more details to add. There's some just little rocks. You could just do some scribbles around here. We could leave this alone completely. Maybe by the time you get there, the plants will be grown in. some outlines of a tree. There's just nothing specific about what's happening over here. We're just drawing some scribbles in just to give it um, kind of an idea that mm, stuff's happening there. Now might be a good time uh, to take a kneaded eraser or some kind of eraser and um, lighten up some of the lines. Okay, my kneaded erasers have been sitting out for a long time, so they're really dry. Where and a, the eraser at the end of your pen, pencil will also work. But this, what this does is it takes away your guidelines, and then you can see how much of the ink drawing really reads. It kind of comes to life. Do you have a red colored pencil? Or maybe a, and a blue colored pencil. We could color in those garage doors and maybe give some color to the sky. I'm going to take a red colored pencil. This one's actually red orange, but it'll do. And I'm going to color in these garage doors and the number 50 for the fire station. I can see that these overhead garage doors have horizontal slats in it and so I'm going to make I'm going to color it in using horizontal lines that'll help emphasize those panels I'm really pushing hard on this pencil because I want to get more color out of it you have a red pen, you could use a red pen. That'd really make those doors red and punch. blue sky. Don't you love in this photo how the clouds are zooming like that? I might uh, show you a little trick. It might give some ideas that there's clouds in the sky. Not too many. Sometimes, like if you've done these before, you'll see, no, I've done some birds in the sky. Sunset could be bats. And if you want, do the sky with the blue. Sometimes it really gives your your drawings an, a little added extra. Where it's the building is nothing but the black of the pen and the white of the paper. And the blue is just a simple color to add. A lot of sketchers, urban sketchers, like to use watercolor and they'll put a wash for the sky. Maybe sometime we'll try that. We can learn it together. I don't normally use watercolors. Travel a little lighter. Just a pen. If you want to, I feel like our building sort of floats. We could do some horizontal lines. I'm going to show the, the driveway there. All right, we finish up our sketch by writing the title and the date location so that years from now you can come back and remember what it was you were looking at. So we're fire station. 
50. We're in La Jolla. And it's November. 2021. How did you do?